The trolley dilemma states, if we consider that everyone has equal rights, then we would be doing something wrong in sacrificing one, even if our intention was to save five. Therefore, isn't it objectively immoral to force vaccination, even if the outcome was net positive on saved lives? Um, I'm going to say, I don't think this is a simple question, but I do think you yeah. can tell that we are not even attempting to grapple with the... Yeah, I think that's right. Let's yep. put it this way. You will discover if you delve into the public health discussion about um, vaccines and other treatments that we are just simply refusing to use the tools at our disposal that we know work. Things like all-cause mortality, right? Mm -hmm. um, things like uh, absolute risk reduction, right? We have the tools. They're named. They're well understood. And we are not using them because somebody is playing a game in which they want to convince us of things that aren't true. But, but the tools uh, exist. In the case of... Is it all right to compel vaccination uh, in order to save lives? This is a difficult one. There is a strong argument to be made <clears throat> that it's never okay. And what we have said here is that actually in light of the corruption of our systems, they have one and only one tool that they are actually morally entitled to, and that is persuasion. If they can persuade us to take it, fine. If they can't persuade us, they don't get to mandate it because they're frankly uh, dangerously corrupt, and that is visible on many different fronts. Were they not corrupt? Is there a scenario we could paint in which um, vaccination was morally mandatable? I believe we could paint those scenarios. I believe they would be exceedingly rare. But we are not using the tools that we would need in this case to justify any such thing, right? The fact is, and basically I would say, Anybody who is simply counting lives is either willfully ignorant of the calculus or a liar, mm -hmm. right? Because the fact is <clears throat> you cannot trade a life of a child against the life of an elderly person. It is immoral to do so, right? The amount of goodness lost if you lose a child is large because they have so much life ahead of them and so much room for bad things to happen. And somebody who's already at the end of their life, even if they are lost, it's not, it's not a simple calculation of a life. And the fact is these tools exist. We know this. Insurance companies right. know the difference between an old person and a young person. Why is it that that is not, why is it that- This was famously uh, done after 9-11. Right. Yeah. Of course. Mm -hmm. And the point is, yeah, nobody really likes talking about the fact that lives aren't of equal value, but this is a simple thing. Mm -hmm. right? The point is how much life was left ahead of you, right? That is absolutely essential. And it is built in <clears throat> to the nature of being a human being, right? Our purpose as adult human beings is to make the world decent and hospitable for generations to come. And we are falling down on that responsibility and we are harming children, and it's completely unacceptable. And to do so with the analytical tools necessary to make these calculations simply not being deployed and us pretending as if they don't exist is preposterous. Is dating a vaccinated person dangerous in regards to the spike protein shedding? By the way, I love your show. Hope you never stop. <coughs> well, look, I've heard this shedding stuff. Yeah, I um, don't know. I've seen, I've seen no evidence either way. I find it almost impossible to imagine that a person could shed enough spike protein yeah. in a way that other people would contact it that it's worth thinking about. That said- that, That's my gut too on this. Let's put it this way. I wasn't, I didn't see how people with a good diet were going to be vitamin D deficient. I now see it. So right. is there something here? Failure, that, as, as, as Dawkins has famously said, right? Failure to imagine is not an argument. Yeah. Right? So my gut on this is like, I don't think so. Yeah, but I've so, seen yeah. no evidence either way. Yeah. My wife and I had COVID last month, and I had it once in April 2020. The home country of my wife requires vax for entry, so it's vax or don't see your family. Where to get information on vax after COVID and its risks? I've seen... Nothing. I've seen the recommendation that you get super immunity if you have both, which is ridiculous. In which case, you know, if that were true, it's the only disease known in which that's the case. I think they pre bunked that one. <laughs> they pre bunked it. Um, but I haven't seen any research. And, you know, the, there's so much research now. I don't claim to be up to date, <clears throat> but I, haven't, I have specifically not seen anything on. Um, 
on the effects of vaccination after having COVID, uh, with the caveat that there might be a, um, what is it, an antibody-dependent enhancement problem? Um, <clears throat> Maybe. Uh, but that's just, that's like, that's um, the speculation. It's not data. One thing is we and others have successfully embarrassed these people on the subject of natural immunity. And it is now acknowledged that natural immunity is superior to vaccine immunity anywhere that reasonable people gather. Does that mean that these systems will be updated so that your natural immunity can substitute? I don't know, because obviously there's something about this that's a campaign to vaccinate everybody, irrespective of whether it makes any freaking sense to vaccinate them, right? right? So that driving force is not necessarily blunted by the update on natural immunity, but the update on natural immunity has occurred, and people are now mm -hmm. um, backtracking where they made insane claims. Is it true that um, vaccine immunity plus natural immunity is super immunity? It is almost certainly a very tiny, tiny, tiny bit true, but in no way that should matter to anyone, right? <laughs> now, it is also possible that to the extent that natural immunity is protective, that giving you a vaccine that then detains a bunch of the immune system, mesmerizing it with antigens that it has been warned about by your infection, could depress your immunity. And this is the next thing we should be investigating yeah. is that <clears throat> to the extent that they're saying, well, of course you should get the vaccine because everybody should get a vaccine and really you want more vaccine rather than less vaccine and that whole thing, right? Mm -hmm. The point is, look, even if it is technically true that there is a tiny bit of extra immunity that you will get if you have had an infection and then you get a vaccination, is there a period in which the vaccination compromises your natural immunity by by gumming right. up the the immune cells that were alerted to the infection itself, probably. And I mean, god damn it! But like, vaccination is supposed to be a way to get exposed to the thing without having to take the risk of being exposed to the thing. Like, this is <clears throat> a side version that's supposed to be safer than and equal to. And yeah, these vaccines aren't exactly vaccines. And so that may be part of the argument that's hiding, but they can't really say that, can they? But if it's an actual vaccine, then having the immunity garnered from actually being exposed to the thing and having your body mount its defense is simply better than having the sidelined version that is safer. Yeah, the sidelined version, which is... If, if we're talking about like an attenuated virus vaccine, like right. a, a traditional... Mm -hmm vaccine that would be safer, um, but a way to a way to get your immune response to be mounted in the same way, but without the risk. In this case, the vaccine in question is so narrowly targeted right. that it couldn't possibly be the equal of natural immunity. Right? It just can't be, not even in principle. Right. And so right. <clears throat> um, and also, you know, there are like a thousand things at which we're trying to raise the attention that the public health authority is actually just shuffling papers and pretending to be interested in your health, right? Why is it not interested in T cells? This is where the better immunity comes from, right? It's obsessed with B cells. Why? Because you know what they are. You've heard of them, right? And so the point is to mesmerize you, they're going to talk about antibody response, right? Oh, greater antibody response, you know? And the point is it's an accounting game. It's very hard to detect how much T cell immunity you have, but mm -hmm. that's the durable immunity that is likely to be more protective and an actual infection will give it to you mm -hmm. and their vaccines will not. And so I guess, I, you know, <clears throat> as always, okay. the question is something like how many times would these people have to be wrong before uh, we're entitled to stop listening to them?